What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. If that subscribe button doesn't have a D after it, what are you waiting for? Give it the D. So I'm back at WR Experts, here with JC. I'm gonna pass it over to him so he can explain the parts. All right guys, how you doing today? We're gonna be installing the Torx Solution Cylinder 4 Coolant Mod, which was based off numerous JDM Subaru motors. And since we have to drain the coolant, I convinced JJ to go ahead and buy a coil radiator and some Torx Solution radiator hoses. Hi mom. Hey mom. <laughs> My name is Juan, I'm the owner of WR Experts Auto Works here in West Park, Florida, where we specialize just in Subarus. We do from basic maintenance to full-blown builds. Feel free to check us out on our Instagram page at WR Experts Auto Works or our Facebook page. Hey, welcome to Nippon Power. Don't forget to check us on our website at nipponpower.com for your performance, uh, import performance needs. Uh, give us a call, 305-805-1321 or stop by our shop. So first we're going to start off by taking the snorkel, snorkel off with the flathead, take off these two clips, then we're going to be using 12 millimeter oh, socket. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's do that again. Yes, let's do that again. Look at this guy. <laughs> I'm changing, I'm getting a new snorkel. Snorkel yeah. install. Yeah. Yep. Cool it. It. It'll not buy, yo. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on top of the roof, so. Oh, yeah. Yo, now we're talking. So the next two bolts are the 12 millimeter for the bracket of the radiator. So next we're gonna be removing the under tray so that we can start draining the coolant. I'll link one of my other videos where I do this in detail. All right, so next we're gonna be taking off this bolt here and one on the other side. 10 millimeter bolts, this is for the thermostat. We're gonna take it out to make sure all the coolant comes out. So just a tip, the two caps, you wanna leave those on the radiator cap and the reservoir cap so that it doesn't come out too crazy. So then we're prying the thermostat on the inside there a little more out so more fluid could come out. So the full drain is gonna take about 10 minutes. There's a thermostat, next take the thermostat out. And then pull the hose down and there it is, look at all that. So next we're gonna disconnect the two connectors for the radiator, one on this side and the other's right there. Then when it's fully drained, we're gonna go ahead and pull the radiator out from the top. So next we're gonna be disconnecting these two hoses right here. Next we're gonna be disconnecting these two clamps for this bigger hose here. So first we're gonna disconnect this side of the hose that goes to the radiator, and then we're gonna pull the radiator out. So we found it easier to remove the clip on this side of the hose after the radiator was out. Oh nice, okay, so it comes with everything. Nice. So next we're gonna be removing the reservoir to swap that over to the new radiator. Also there's some 10 millimeter bolts that we're gonna be removing as well. Okay, so it's just a clip right here that took off the reservoir. And next we're just gonna remove the hose off the cap. So then we're gonna be moving the fans over from the old radiator to the new one, one by one. So the new radiator comes with its own 10 millimeter. Looks like you could also use a Phillips. We're gonna take those off so we can put the new fans back on. So start with the bottom, slide those in the holes. And then on the top here, we're just gonna use the bolts. Then we're grabbing the second one, same thing, in the hole at the bottom. Line it up here. And then we're also gonna put the hose back on here. So before you put the reservoir back on, make sure you put the bolt on first. Next, we're putting the coolant back on, coolant reservoir. Clicks right in. Next, put the bolts in, but make sure you're not cross-threading them, so start them by hand. So we're tightening it just snug, you don't want to over-tighten it. And then finish it by hand. Next, you're going to put the hose inside the reservoir. So these two nipples here, you want to make sure they line up with, and goes inside those brackets down there, right inside those holes. 
Then we're gonna put the top brackets back on to hold it in place. So just so you know, Koyo um, adds the new, I guess nipples, they're called, <laughs> um, right there. So we're gonna be putting those right over here. So there's a size for the older model Subarus and the newer ones. So we're gonna be using a 17 millimeter to go ahead and loosen that up. So we're gonna be using the smaller one of the two nipples. It's the one you just wanna check, make sure it fits in the hose before you put it on. Also another tip, it might be easier to put on the nipple on the radiator before you put the fans on because as we're tightening it, you start to hit the fans. And you don't wanna over tighten it, you wanna go snug. Next, we're just gonna put on the hoses. So these are better than the stock ones because the stock ones tend to expand and they tend to crack. So that's why we're going with some Torque Solutions hoses. Make sure to compare it to the stock size to make sure you have the right angle on the right size because it could be off just by a little bit and it could cause a fitment issue. So we're gonna put a little brake cleaner on the hand just to kind of lube up uh, the areas the hoses are gonna go in so that it could slide in better. Now we're gonna test fit first, make sure this is the angle we wanna put it in at. The reason we test fit first, we wanna make sure we're not touching the belt here with the hose or even the fans. So looks like our clearance is good. So they provide you with four clamps, two for the top and two for the bottom. So you wanna make sure you get the clamp over the little fan area right here first. Um, if not, it won't fit. So put the, the clamp right here and then the hose through the, uh, the hose onto the radiator. Now these clamps are seven millimeter when we go to tighten them. Now with this one, since there's some limited space to work with, we wanna angle the clip so that we can access the head from right there. <laughs> so when you put the hose on, you wanna make sure that it's over the coolant crossover pipe and you feel it by hand. Uh, if it's not on there, the hose could pop off. So just make sure you're doing that carefully when you're putting the clamp on. So this is the angle we want the top of the head of the clamp so that we can access it from right here. So next we're gonna be grabbing the thermostat housing off the stock radiator. Just by removing the clamp there and pulling it off. Oh, we're not. <laughs> you may need to use a flat head or something to kind of help you take this off. As you can see, it's a, it's a bit of a pain. Nice. There you go. So sometimes you might have like corrosion um, on the housing. Make sure to clean it off so that the new hose that goes on it grabs on better. So we're gonna be using a wire brush and if you're at home, you can maybe use some sandpaper and protection, there you go. Nice. Looks new. So a little tip, the water pump is gonna keep leaking throughout this whole thing. So make sure to keep the pan down here that's if you're recycling um, the coolant. If you're putting on new coolant, you should be, should be good. Make sure to check your thermostat gasket, make sure it's in good condition and that you don't need to replace it. And then we're gonna be putting the thermostat back in the housing. So there's like a little pin right at the top there of the thermostat. You wanna make sure that's at the top, facing the top. And then you want it pointing towards the front of the car. Now we're putting the housing back on the thermostat with two 10 millimeter bolts. Next we're gonna be tightening the 10 millimeter bolts. Once again, tighten it snug. You don't wanna over tighten it. So next we're connecting the fans, one right here and one right there. So once again, we're gonna uh, check the fitting the fitment on this hose, make sure we put it on the right way so it's not touching anything. Once again, a little brake fluid, just to lube it up a little bit and make it easier to slide in. Brake cleaner. Uh, sorry, brake cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> so before you tighten everything down, you wanna make sure the hose isn't kinked and it's the shape it's supposed to be. It's not being forced to bend anywhere. Once again, make sure that these are facing down so it's easy to get to from underneath your car to tighten the clamps. So the tools we're gonna be using is a 12 millimeter, a one inch crow's foot, and an extension. So here it is, the Cylinder 4 coolant mod from Torx Solutions. So we're gonna be using a 12 millimeter Allen. So we're using a little bit of Teflon to go ahead and wrap it around the fitting. So we're gonna start it by hand and thread it in there. Your only job is 
this is this is why you don't get married guys once it's snug go ahead and use the tool so you're gonna put the tool over the fitting and start turning so as you turn it's gonna get caught on the steering rack there and then you gotta take the tool back off put it back on so it's a tedious process oh shit So right now we're putting the clamps on the hoses so that they're ready to be tightened once we put the T, T fitting uh, in between all the hoses. So you want to make sure to use lube on the hoses to make it easier to slide into the T fitting. I hear you, uh, you get carried in Call of Duty, that's what I hear. That's uh, right what I heard. I'm just the messenger, man. I'm the messenger. Okay, so we're gonna take the sleeve off this one hose here. That way we can get more grip on the clamp. So next we're tightening up to two seven millimeters on the top part of the T-fitting. And now we're tightening up the lower one. So last we tie wrap these two hoses together to keep it away from the starter. All right, so now we can go ahead and start buttoning everything up. Since we're reusing uh, the coolant we took off, we're gonna put it back into the system right now. What are you gonna do? Admire your build. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Rainland juice. So we're gonna be checking for leaks, make sure everything's nice and tight, nothing's loose. Now we're putting on the radiator cap. So usually the stock radiator will take about two bottles of uh, the coolant. Since we have an aftermarket one, it'll take about two and a half. So we're gonna fill it to about here. Then we're gonna start this, the car. Uh, right now he's pumping it to make sure all the bubbles come out. When we start the car and it goes through the whole system, it's gonna get some more of the bubbles out. We're gonna burp the system. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start the car. When you're burping the system, make sure that your air conditioner is off. Now we're going to go ahead and tighten up the brackets. And now we're putting the snorkel back on, which is just the two clips up up front. So the burping process takes about 30 minutes. We want it to get to operating temps. We want the fans to kick on, make sure there's no bubbles, and then go through that again, let the fans kick on again, make sure there's no bubbles, and then we'll be good. Once again, thank you, Andy, for this install. You made it look easy. Let them know where they can find you on Instagram. My Instagram is uh, L E L underscore Pandy. You can find me there. Give me a like, or you know, and please subscribe to the, to the channel. All right, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. While you're burping the system, also make sure that your car doesn't overheat. Sometimes the thermostat could get stuck closed, and you'll notice your temps rising. And you can monitor on the access port or the gauge that comes on your vehicle. So we're using a thermometer to see if the thermostat open. The thermostat open. Yeah. So yeah, it's good. Usually, that hose should be cold if the thermostat is getting open. Oh, okay. The top, measure of the top. Okay. C8, and measure of the bottom one, which is 140, so the thermostat is open. Okay. So the car is not overheating. If it is overheating, the, if it is starting overheating, then you'll see this to rise up. Okay. As soon as you see that, then you shut the car off and, you know. All right, so after we clean it, put the cap back on, and we're good to go. All right guys, so as you can see, the install, Andy made it look really easy, but it's a big help. Definitely recommend getting a radiator. The cylinder four coolant mod is recommended because that cylinder tends to get hot uh, the most out of all four cylinders. So check out Torque Solutions for that part. Also, WR Experts Auto Works uh, for all the builds that they have on their Instagram. Uh, you can go ahead and reach out to them if you have any questions. Also a quick shout out to Nippon Power for that radiator. Make sure to check them out, nipponpower.com. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks.